All right, I'm joined now by my friend and colleague, our Quebec director, Renaud Broussard, and you're also in charge of the CTF Atlantic file. So you wear many hats here. And you were telling me something a couple of weeks ago that blew my mind. It must be a post-Christmas miracle. <laughs> Nova Scotia balanced its budget. How? I, I know, right? With these with these times of COVID, it seems like every single government is spending more than what they bring in. But uh, no, we actually have uh, in the Atlantic provinces, we now have two governments that have balanced their budgets. Uh, there's New Brunswick, now there's Nova Scotia. Uh, they're spending a hundred million dollar surplus this year. But what's even crazier is that uh, even at the height of the pandemic, they also had a surplus. So they kept their streak of balanced budget uh, even during the uh, even at the height of the pandemic. Now, when I hear surplus and I hear government instead of balanced budget, I'm like, <laughs> are you taking too much of my money? Like, what's the deal here? Where does it break down when it comes to spending? Well, uh, really, when it comes to spending, what they did, uh, unlike most other provinces, they they didn't really see this as a window of opportunity, if I may uh, borrow our, our federal finance minister's words, uh, for a bunch of new expensive programs. Uh, they did have some new some new spending nearly everywhere, but most of it was focused on healthcare. Mm. Uh, so it was not, you know, it, it, we're not spending more money on transits and buses and new computer systems. It just said, well, this is a health issue, so we'll put more money on health. Imagine that! How novel! And so, I, I know, right? It, it's it's like it's it's like it's rocket science for some of these guys. It's like, hey, folks, we've got a pandemic. Let's not boost our budgets on everything from corporate welfare to weird public art, right? Let's focus on health. And you know, that is why we're running into major problems in places like Ontario. And at the federal level, it's just a dumpster fire. They're spending mm -hmm. money like a drunken frat party at the federal level. So it's good to see that at the provincial level, at least, sounds like in Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, they're concentrating most of their new spending on health. Is that fair to say? It, it really is. And look, I I don't want to get I don't want to give them all the credit. Okay. Let's be clear. The main reason why uh, they're having a surplus right now is uh, sure they, they did hold the brakes a little bit of spending, still spending more, but not as much as some of the other guys. I'm looking at you, Doug Ford and Frost. Want to go up there? Um, but the main reason why is that when they when they made their budget. Uh, they thought everybody was going to make a lot less money than they're making right now. So they thought business closures would be a lot longer, a lot harder. Turns out they weren't as hard. Turns out people were more resilient. Businesses were able to, uh, I don't want to say fully recover, but kind of Adapt. somewhat recover faster. Uh, yeah. so, so that is the main thing that helped. And unlike most other provinces, they also came into the pandemic with balanced budgets. Uh, so they didn't have a massive multi-billion dollar deficit. They started this thing with a, a couple of hundred million dollar surplus. Uh, the surplus shrank, but they still held the brakes on spending a little bit. Things ended up getting better. And as such, now they're, they're able to post a surplus. Okay. So is it just all roses now? Are they out of the woods looking into the future? Are they going to be good? Uh, they're not out of woods yet. Okay. Uh, they're in a better position than others. Let's just put it this way. Uh, now, what they balance is the operational spending. So for a family, that's like, what do you spend on groceries or on gas uh, every week? So that side of the budget is balanced. They're making enough money to cover that. Uh, but they're spending on a whole lot of capital projects. Uh, so to continue with the family analysis, while that part of the budget is balanced, uh, it's like they're they're buying a new washer, renovating a kitchen, and, and doing all of these kind of things that do pile on the debt. Uh, so that is still going to go up by about five hundred million this year. The other thing to keep in mind is that, uh, like every other province, Nova Scotia got a little bit more transfer payments from the feds. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some temporary transfer payments that federal government did to all provinces to help them fight COVID. Uh, so temporary health transfers that are not necessarily going to come back next year. Uh, so that's a little bit like uh, a family saying, you know, uh, right now we're doing fine because we just got this huge inheritance that we got. Uh, that doesn't mean you're going to get a huge inheritance next year. So it, they, they will still need to look at their spending, try and see what they can do to reduce it to a more uh, manageable level. 
But at least, unlike other provinces, they're not starting from a point where they're already billions of dollars in the red, even after getting the inheritance. Yeah, as our federal director, Franco Terrazano, had pointed out, yeah, don't get used to this. Don't bake yeah. in this COVID mess into your budgetary future plans. Uh, Renaud, thank you so much for this. It's at least good to find some shard of hope and good news in this huge mess. Uh, but going forward, they make sure they have to tighten their belts there regardless. Thanks so much, man. It's always a pleasure. Hi, I'm Scott Hennig, President of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. If you've got another minute, I'd like to ask you to think about the one person you know that would really enjoy listening to this podcast. Do us a favor and do them a favor and send them a quick note to let them know about it. At the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, we believe there is power in numbers. That's why we've worked so hard to build an army of taxpayers who are ready to push back. And we did it because people like you shared our work with that one person that they knew would really appreciate taking part. Thanks for listening, and thanks for doing your part to make Canada a better place.